Stay with us and we'll bring you all this week's colour, fun, excitement and most importantly, of course, the finest horsing action in Australia. The Melbourne Cup Carnival, it's called. Tuesday, it is the big one, the Foster's Melbourne Cup and we'll be on the air from 9.30. Derby Day, the best race day in the world, certainly as far as Melbourne people are concerned and it is just fantastic. The weather is great. Certainly are, Dan, and good afternoon, everyone. Well, a magnificent day for Derby Day. Graham Kelly, as I welcome you, this is the one we've been waiting 12 months for. Yes, it certainly is. It couldn't be a better day, Peter. It's a great day, great racing, and a great crowd coming into Flemington this afternoon. Well, Graham, let's see if we can kick off the carnival with a winner in the first event, the George Adams Maribyrn on plate, and taking a look at some of the runners. First of all, number one, Cloud Captain. This horse has had only one start for a win at Randwick. It was unfancied at 20 to 1, but showed early speed and is drawn pretty well, definitely amongst the chances for a place, I think. Yes, uh, number two, Diddy Do It. Uh, looks to be the hardest for Razor Rhythm to beat. Struck interference early at Caulfield when beaten uh, had her only start by on with it. Uh, she'll run, he'll get run very well down the straight. Did he do it a good chance? Another of the chances is number seven, Natchez, in well on the weights compared to Did he do it, leading at two and a half kilos better and also uh, is nicely drawn here. Protest dismissed at its last run when it ran third at Caulfield behind on with it and Natchez could represent a threat to the favourite Razor Rhythm. Another chance in the race is number 14, Lady Purpose, a $300,000 yearling. She's very well bred by Sir Tristram from Purpose. Uh, she came home solidly uh, behind uh, Pampas Fire at Caulfield. We'll appreciate the extra 100 metres here and a uh, good chance in the race. Another one well bred, Graham, number 15, Pampas Fire, a half-sister to the mighty Zedative. Was well back last time when it won at Caulfield, came into 9-4 to four and beat Velvet Blue there. And prior to that had run second here at Flemington behind Dangerous Seam. Again amongst the chances, but the favourite certainly raised the rhythm, Graham. Yes, number 16. Razor Rhythm, certainly the one to beat. A blistering performance at uh, Mooney Valley last week when she ran 57 seconds for the 1,000 metres and she's improved since then. So Razor Rhythm, your one? Yes, certainly is, Peter. OK, and I've gone for Razor Rhythm to beat number two, Did He Do It? Well, joining us here over the carnival will be a familiar face to us here on the 10 Network, especially here at Flemington, Dr Turf, and he'll be looking at the value bets and also casting an eye over the runners in the mounting yard. Dr Turf, welcome first of all. What are your thoughts on the first? Thank you very much, Pete. Well, look, it's hard to uh, find value in a race where there's a two-to-one on favourite. It just looks the winner of the bottom one, Razor Rhythm, Pete. I thought one that looked very well on the yard and also ran very well at her first start was Lady Purpose in the uh, Friedman colours. The extra 100 metres here will suit, as Graham pointed out, and I think she might represent a little bit of value here on the tote. So there you have it, our thoughts on the first event, the first race of the carnival. The best of luck to you on Derby Day. We have a magnificent day and hopefully the pocket will be lined, Dan, at the end of the day. Pete, we look forward to uh, many winners from you and Graham Kelly. Bob Wormel, a very good afternoon to you. You're in the betting room all week this week. Razor Rhythm has been backed off the map. On the tote, she's almost unbackable. Is that the situation in the ring, Bob? Yes, Dan, that's the only one the serious punters want. Razor Rhythm is the one that they've gone for. The big syndicates that uh, come down here from Sydney to bet. Uh, they're here. Uh, gratifying, I think, for the bookmakers and, of course, for the BRC to see the betting ring absolutely crowded despite the economic downturn. But the big dough is going on Razor Rhythm. The punters suggest that though she's odds on, she can do it again. There's a couple, though, that they've, they've specced at a very generous each-way odds to pull her on. Lady Purpose, good money for Lady Purpose. She's been back to generous each-way odds. So has Pampas Fire. Did he do it? They're the three that they want down here, Dan. Good luck with the first. Thanks, Bobby. Lee Friedman trains Lady Purpose, one of the horses backed in the first event to beat the favourite Razor Rhythm. And, uh, Graham, what are Lee's thoughts on the Phillies' chances? Well, Lee... Uh, on the betting ring, uh, Ray's rhythm looks unbeatable, but what do you think about Lady Purpose's chances in this race? 
Well, Graham, you know, Ray's rhythm was very impressive at Mooney Valley the other day and beat a filly of ours, but um, this is a very good filly of ours, Lady Purpose, and uh, she's been up the straight a couple of times now and impressed us. And although I have a lot of respect for David's filly, I feel that if there is one to beat her, ours will be the one. And you all appreciate the 1,000 metres today. That'll suit you too, won't it? I think so, yeah. She's been looking for the 1,000 metres and she should be running home strongly. So good luck with Lady Purpose and for the rest of the week, Lee. Thank you very much. Graham Kelly with last year's winning Melbourne Cup trainer Lee Friedman. Peter Crackers Keenan is at the barriers. Crackers, the two year old, some of them having their first look at a racetrack, and uh, it's very important to get a guide as to how they are uh, looking or shaping up behind the barriers. What interests you? Well, they're looking for a treat down here at the moment, Dan, and uh, just looking at the top filly, Razor Rhythm. She's broken down a little bit around the neck, but I suppose that's because of the hot weather and that, but uh, these are little, little, I suppose, youngsters having their first go. Basically, a couple of them, uh, they've really got to get away well. They've got the best jockeys in Australia on them. They're all circling around behind me at the moment, but uh, the horses look a treat. They're a credit to their trainers, and uh, they'll be a bit nervous at the start because, well, you know, it's a big occasion for these blokes, but uh, I really reckon it's going to be a great race. Crackers, uh, did you have a look at Lady Purpose? Lee's very confident of her. I haven't been able to talk to any joggers. Think today to Harry White just going past, but uh, they're a bit nervous at the start of a spring carnival, and uh, they'll be wanting to really get it going. But looking at the track, the track is going to be lightning fast, and they've uh, got a great sole of grass on it. Certainly is. It's uh, it really is on fire for the best race day in the world. Certainly, I consider that. Crackers, you've been all around the, the world as well, and uh, this would have to measure up as one of the best, surely. Yes. Well, they're just calling them forward now, and the jockeys jockeys will just get them out and hunt them down. They'll run some quick time because they've got the wind behind them. Our uh, special guest last year, John Letts, he's ridden two Melbourne Cup winners, he's ridden a Derby winner, he's a good friend of mine and he's in the box uh, all week this week. And uh, Johnny, you've been able to have a look at some of the horses go to the barrier. Uh, you'd be riding some of these horses, ridden winners of these types of races over your uh, long and distinguished career. What excites you about, first of all, Derby Day or Cup Week and the Maribyrn Plate? Well, Dan, looking at Razor Rhythm going out onto the track, I'd say she was the one to beat and the one I'd like to be on if I was riding here today. Uh, she's ran 57 round Mooney Valley over 1,000 metres. It's going to be interesting if she wins today to see what time she runs down the straight six here, uh, straight five here at Flemington. She looked beautiful. Uh, I think the three fillies can Quinella the uh, trifecta of the race, uh, the bottom three, but uh, Lee Freeman, very confident about his filly. Raise the rhythm. I did notice had a, uh, a bandage on her near side hind fetlock joint. Whether she's give that a knock down or, or whether she's just scalped herself last time out. But uh, she on looks. She looks the one that uh, I'd like to be on if I was riding. Have you seen a more impressive filly than Razor Rhythm? I, I certainly thought she was perhaps the best, even better than Dangerous Seam, and uh, she really did, did look something special at Mooney Valley. Well, she was a flying machine, and you know to go around the valley and the time she went around is she's something special. If she repeats that today, she's going to win very easily, and uh, she looked magnificent in the yard, and she's a credit to David Hayes. How do jockeys feel, John, going to the barrier on, a, on an important day like this Derby Day? Well, Dan, this is the first race of the carnival. As Crackers said, the jockeys are all pretty hyped up down there, and... Uh, we're getting the big carnival underway and as, as we say every year it's getting bigger and bigger and it is getting bigger and bigger and better and uh, uh, the first race of carnival is always nice to get a win under your belt in the first race of the day and uh, I'm sure that these jocks will be out there and we've got some great jockeys riding here at the carnival this year and as we have had every year but it seems to be getting stronger all the time and uh, oh gee this is going to be a great race and some great jockeys some great horses and I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's four or five record broken over the carnival here this year. Jono, thanks a lot. We look forward to uh, many more comments from you from today and all over the week. And the field course getting set for the Maribyrnong Plate. That's Mr. Steed behind the gates with John Marshall in the saddle, one of the first starters. Take Advantage has had two runs before. A winner first up here at Flemington on the 6th of October before failing at Caulfield. But some of these two rolls no doubt will go on and you'll see the names in races like the Blue Diamond and the Golden Slipper come next year. Favourite has raised the rhythm on the tote, 70 and 55 cents. That is the win and place return for 50 cent investment on the Victorian totalisator. And most of the horses have been locked into the gates. Mr. Steed, the only one out. Razorism, the favourite, jumping from barrier number six in the white with the brown circles, trained by David Hayes and written by Michael Clark. First race on Derby Day. Maribyrnong Plate, Group 2, 1,000 metre sprint. $151,000 in prize money. Light is on, and they're racing. Razor Rhythm jumped out awkwardly, but she jumped out quickly. Nacho's got away pretty well, and so too did found goal down near the inside. Out deeper on the track was Diddy Do It, going away quickly also was Subliminal, followed by Pampas Fire. Lady Purpose is getting back, and she's towards the tail of the field with My Wandering Star. Over the crossing, 700 metres to go. 
and Razor Rhythm is one of the joint leaders here with Natchez and Noble Lancer up on the inside. They were followed by Spectacular, just in behind those was Found Gold. They were followed by Roxy Dancer, Pampers Fire, Diddy Do It coming into it strongly, and so too was Lady Purpose and then Mr. Steed and Wider out on the track, My Wandering Star, followed by Take Advantage as they run down towards the 350 metre point. Razor Rhythm in front now, Clark has to shake the filly up, but she's going better than Natchez and over on the inside, battling on was Noble Lancer, Lady Purpose down the outside with Diddy Do It, look the danger. Razor Rhythm going strongly though, I think the favourite's got it, once she has. And Razor Rhythm's going on to win the Merrill Long Plate by two lengths. Second Lady Purpose, third Pampers by the Phillies run the trifecta. Then came Noble Lancer, followed in by Diddy Do It. Next in Subliminal and then My Wandering Star Spectacular Natchez. Well back Roxy Dancer found gold. Cloud Captain never a chance today from Take Advantage. And Mr. Steed was back at the tail end of the field. And no doubt about it, she's very good, Jono. She's very good. She's run 57 and a half. And uh, Michael Clark looked to be in a little bit of trouble just after the start down when she jumped awkwardly. But she got herself going very quickly. I thought the Lee Friedman filly was a very good run. And uh, also, as we said before the race, that the trifecta looked like coming from the bottom three horses. And uh, But she is very, very good. I, I, I thought she might have got a little bit better down than 57 and a half because around the turn she's run 57. And today with a straight run. And the track, as you can see today, is lightning fast. But uh, you can't do any more than winning. She's won very easily. She's outstanding. Congratulations, too, because you did tip the trifecta only a moment before the start of that race. So well done, John. I'm in yes. fine form for a fine week. And I didn't take it. Oh, well, let's not talk about that. <laughs> 16, 14, and 15. David Hayes, what a phenomenal start to the season he's had. He's only been training for, for three months, taking over from his father, Colin. He won the Cox Plate with Better Loosen Up last week. And the first race on the, the most important race meeting in the world. He trains the winner Razor Rhythm. Fantastic start. Peter Donigan is talking to David Hayes. Thanks, Dan, and uh, a very excited David Hayes. Nice to get the first winner of the carnival, David. Yeah, it was. Uh, she's very uh, smart filly and uh, should be put aside now for the, uh, the good two-year-old races uh, in the autumn. She seemed to have a fair bit up her sleeve at the finish, too. Yeah, she, uh, Michael didn't draw the stick on her. She was stargazing a little down the straight, but... Uh, I think when she's got something to follow, she'll be quite explosive when uh, when we let it go seriously in the autumn. Did that worry at all, the fact that she was caught out three wide and sort of didn't have the rudder, the running rail beside her? Well, it always helps a two-year-old to have the running rail, but no, it didn't worry me because, uh, you know, if she was on a two-to-one on shot, you don't like to get boxed up on the fence, and it was a straight race, so you don't uh, mind covering a little bit of ground. David, well done. Let's hope it's the first of many winners for the carnival for you. Thank you. David Hayes, the winning trainer field is set to go for the Hilton on the Park. Race number three on Derby Day. Straight six, 1200 metres. Final card, the favourite. In barrier three. They all stand up pretty well. Racing now. Our final card missed the start, I reckon, by two lengths and pioneering was slow to begin. Wrap around, won the start. With Bark Curra going very fast now, the Adelaide Grey is going to spear across to the road and lead comfortably. Bark Curra's in front after 200 metres by two lengths to wrap around. Going up the third was unbeatable view and now final card getting through the pack to about fourth. Then Premier Copper, All Ranch was out a little bit wider, back behind them Fero and then Century Pike getting into trouble, the Bullfighter. And Temperant King was out the back with Pioneering and Rose of Demas. Over the crossing, 600 metres left to go and Bark Curra led by a length and a quarter to wrap around. Final card went up third and out wider was All Ranch. Then Premier Copper, Fero running into it from Century Pike and Temperate King. About 450 to go, Bark Curra in front but final card and wrap around go up to it. A length and a half to Premier Copper, Fero's under the whip but running on. All Ranch can't go on and then Century Pike, 300 to go though. Final card went up to take the lead from wrap around which is fighting back the filly. They're clear of Bark Curra, Fero and Premier Copper. Wrap around the inside, final card the outside. Final card knuckling down, wrap around kicking back the filly. Got him beaten there, wrap around win. Wrap around a half a length, the final card, Premier Copper third. Then Fero, fronted in by Bark Curra. A break to All Ranch and Century Pike, the bullfighter. Well back in the field, Rose of Demas, and then unbeatable view pioneering. And last of all was Temperate King. Very gutsy win, John. Very gutsy win, Andrew. I do think final card was a bit unlucky. If he hadn't missed the jump, I think he would have had a lot easier run. He looked like winning about four, three or four hundred metres out when he coasted up outside of Bakara. He seemed to scramble over the crossing. I'd forgive him on that run. It's his first run down the straight run, and uh, I think he's worth following Barcara. But uh, the filly, when they settled down to fight it out, there was only the two of them over the last 200 metres, and uh, I think the last 200 metres told them to stop the clock at 1-9.
which is a fantastic run, Dan, which is uh, 183 is the best metric run run by Planet Ruler and Gold Trump. And, uh, I mean, these horses, uh, they're only three-year-olds, aren't they? And they've, they've gone within a tick of uh, the, uh, the, those older horses' um, time. But, uh, no, nothing taken away from Wraparound. A very good win. And how do you stop the Hayes machine winning? It could be a big day, as we said before. Uh, they've got a great, great day coming up. Their final card... Well, you could almost seem towards the inside, but he was definitely last to leave the barriers. Last to leave the barrier, where a wraparound begun very quickly. And Barkara, Danny, he's uh, 1,000 metres. He'd have been very hard to beat. Set up a very fast uh, tempo. Now, Gay Waterhouse is talking to David. David's already trained a double, and his best horse hasn't even run yet. Well, David, you must have been very impressive with the film. Yeah, silly. Yes, yes. Uh, I saw when the uh, second horse came up alongside of Jim Casty look behind uh, for dangers coming outside so he must have been quite confident do you think final card was unlucky oh uh, well i didn't see what happened in the first furlong and i'm pretty biased so i say no <laughs> and what what's for the viewers what's the best to come i think better loosen up uh, he's uh, i think he's uh, almost a champion and he might prove it today thank you david thank you we didn't you talking about the, what's coming today or <laughs> Very strong words from David Hayes there, and why not? He really has been on fire, not just in Melbourne, but certainly in Adelaide. I've been talking to uh, Kevin Mitchell, who's just taken over as assistant starter down here, one of the great jockeys of Australia, probably in the last 30 years, and he's just joined Paula Hearn down here, and uh, they're a mighty, mighty bunch of people, but uh, these horses look a, tr a treat. What, have you got a pick on the race? I like the top, he whisk, I reckon that a whiskey road uh, filly, young Beck's trainer, taking over old man, great trainers of, uh, of fillies over the years, and Graham's just carrying on, and I reckon she's just got too much class, and just too much balance at the finish. Thanks Crackers, John Letts is in the box next to me, Jono, um, it's either good fillies, Whist and Triscay, but is, you know, the Mahasans or the Beachside, that filly of uh, David Hayes coming over from Adelaide, are there any threat to these? I don't think so, Dan. I really think that the top two are a class above the others. And Graham Beck, as Cracker said, he's taken over from his father. He's a, a great trainer of three-year-old fillies. And, uh, oh, gee, when you look back at Neville, uh, Neville Beck's record over the years in Oaks races with three-year-old fillies and these type of races, uh, he was just an outstanding trainer. And uh, I do think that the top eight, she looked magnificent uh, going out onto the track. And so did the, the number two horse, Triscay. Uh, the good judges tell me Trisco was very unlucky at uh, Caulfield, but uh, oh, that's what racing's all about. It's got a, two great riders too. You've got uh, Gavin Duffy and Shane Dye, and uh, you know racing for a lot of money. So you'll see a, a great competition here. I thought that the, another horse in the race with a chance uh, might have been Berbera. It was only 1.8 lengths away the other day, and uh, uh, the coat pullers have been uh, tipping Berbera around quite a little bit for an each way chance in the race. But I'd, I'd like to go one two in the race. I think though they'll Quinella. 2.15 whist on the tote, John, and Trisco's at $1.90. But Mammy's well in commission at $2.70, a weekend delight at $3.80. So it's not just a two-horse race, according to the, the punters through the, tele, uh, the TAB, but uh, they certainly are the two class horses, whist and Trisco. Bob Mormel, have you got anything to add to that? It's Bobby, two to go in here for the Wakeful Stakes. Toy Rani, the grey, about to go up. And uh, Trisco, who's drawn the outside... She's had uh, bad luck in her barrier draws of late. She drew the outside in the thousand guineas and had to be used up, and her run was phenomenal, really. But she's having her first try at 2,000, as is Whist. Wakeful Stakes, set to go. Lights on. Stand well, race four. Beachside Toey for Michael Clark out wider. Racing now. Now missing the start, beach side of length, Toy Rani slow to begin and also out the back early was all mine, the stable mate of Triske. Wist won the start, she's in front early, Sandhill's trying to go around her. Crony safe over on the inside, Aroma White out, they're starting to dawdle up front, a few of these horses choking up a little bit. Bavaria around them out wider on the track with her destiny, Sandhill's ambled across to lead them at the mile. 1,600 metres to go and the Vic Thompson train fully got out by a length and a half. Now Wist has given a bit more rain in second placing but she wants to toss her head around a little bit. Going around her now was Crony Soap and Aroma followed by Mahasan fifth. Her destiny in the red and black colours going around them. Going around the outside now is All Mine to put a bit of speed on. She's a stable mate of Trisco who's drifted back to third last. Burberry just in front of a weekend delight on her inside and about two lengths behind Trisco with Toy Rani in beach side. 1,200 metres left to go and All Mine's in front led by two lengths. Sandhill second, a neck away third, a Roma, a length and a half away, then a Herd Destiny. 
followed by Crony Soap, West Link further back to number Harson in seventh placing. One and a half further back, Bavaria. Trisco is caught out three wide. Mammy's just up in front of her, about eight. Then Weekend Delight, Torani, and last of all was Beachside. About 900 metres left to go on the Wakeful Stakes. And the leader is still all mine by three quarters to Aroma. A length away, Sand Hills are half to her destiny and Mammy. One and a half to Whisk, and here comes Trisco around the outside of Mahasan. And behind those was Beachside, Crony Safe as they run to the turn, and then Berberia Weekend Delight. About 600 metres left to go. All mines in front by a length to Aroma. Mammy went up quickly out wide, followed by Sand Hills. Crony Safe needing a run her destiny. Triskay running on strongly. Whisk is going to need a lot of luck. She went back to the rails. Down towards the 400 metres point. All mine a length and a half in front of Sand Hills. Down the outside, Triskay with Mammy. Whisk is bursting her way to the clear. 300 metres to go. It's still all mine a length and a half in front. Here comes Whisk and look at Beachside down the outside. All mine in front. Beachside coming out of Triskay. Beachside going to all mine. Beachside and all mine. Beachside, all mine. They hit the line tight. I reckon all mine just won it. All mine a short half into Beachside in a thriller. Third home's tight again with Triskay, Sandhills and West. Then weekend delight, Crony Soap, Mahasan, Berberia, her destiny, Aroma, Toy, Rani and Mammy looked a big chance on the turn. She compounded. And what a finish, John. Let's... Well, Dan, I, I, Whisk give Gavin Duffy a torridite early in the race. There was no speed on, no doubt about it. I think all mine's won the race. Just, just arrived there ahead of Beachside. I think it's won by about a head on the line, but Whisk give um, Gavin Duffy a terrible ride early, and she's going to be a little bit of a risk now, I'd say, down at the distance in the Oaks. Uh, she wouldn't settle. All mine, Ken Russell, what a great uh, judgment he showed going to the lead and, and just letting her rate it beautifully in front. Nothing took it on, and all the way down the Flemington Strait, it must have looked like about two miles down that straight. And uh, outside's got up, beach side. got up. Well, there's David Hayes again. Hey, when you're Ken hot, Russell, you're hot, aren't you? When you're hot, you're hot. But Gavin, um, Ken Russell on all mine, I thought, rode a great race. Went to the front and rated it perfectly, just unlucky to be beaten. But when you're hot, you're hot. And David Hayes is hot at the moment. And uh, he's just been too good on the day. All, uh, all mine, a great run in second place. And Dan, who did we have for third was Trisco. Uh, Trisco's run third, yeah. She's been yeah. beaten by her band barrier. She was terrible wide all the way. And uh, I thought a horse that ran a nice race was the fourth or Sandals. Ran a nice race to run home nicely. But Whisk, I, I'd forget that she ran over that 2,000 metres. Get her back to... Uh, 1600 and, and she'll definitely win. Surprise with that photo. Beach side, she was so running was home at a rate of knots, but uh, well, we both thought all, all mine had just hung on. But for a 50 cent win and place return, 10.90 and 250 are the approximates for Beach side, 220 for all mine and 80 for third. Quite an upset because it was expected to be a match in two with Whisk and Triskay, and really they never looked like winning the race at any particular point. As we said, when you're hot, you're hot. How can David uh, Hayes go wrong at the moment? Three winners from four races. Great start, Gay. I have to keep rubbing up against David because he's got the Midas touch. Well, you must have been very impressed with her. Terrific effort. It was a slowly run race and she came from last and just got there in the last time. Yes, now she'll back up on Thursday in the Oaks. That's right. We paid a late entry, which was uh, quite game. She'd only won one race going into today and uh, uh, paid the late entry on Friday, yesterday, so we're quite pleased. You must have known something. Yeah, well, she's always promised a lot. It's just nice to see, you know, she just enjoyed the big straight today and uh, given a chance to stay, and that's what she did. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Gay Waterhouse and, uh, and David Hayes. Sorry, John. She's back there running more. She's back about fourth last now, beach side at this stage. Another yep. whip from Michael Clark. She's gradually making around. Gee, I didn't think she got there in time, and I think, you know, looking at the TV monitor, well, I haven't seen it yet, but I, I, to the naked eye, it looked like Kenny Russell had pinched the race. I thought it was a great ride by Kenny Russell, but as you say, when you're hot, you're hot. Here she comes. Now, she still hasn't got um, all mine yet. She's gradually, and I thought the post, I think Ken Russell was pretty, see, even there, Dan, just a couple of hops off of the line, and she is still in front. Still ahead in front, yeah. Still ahead in front. It looks like she's won. Yeah. It's, but, oh, uh, gee. I think David, did David Hayes put that winning post up there? Uh, must have been the hoodoo colours on the second horse, <laughs> I think. But, uh, yeah, they're certainly on fire at the moment. We'll take a break, come back and see if David can, can make it four winners for the day in the Gadsden Stakes. He's got